All right, guys, we're going to be taking a tour through France today with the Berthier 8mm Lavelle. Let's check this out. <laughs> oh boy. Right over the top. <laughs> All right, a little high. <laughs> She's old, guys. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. I got lucky there. No problem. Guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. And today we're going to be taking a look at a really cool service rifle. This is a model 1907 Berthier. Uh, these were in use by the French in World War I and moving past World War I, but really, really cool service rifle. Uh, this one's probably pushing uh, a little over 100 and, 106 years old now at this point. Uh, so she's definitely... Uh, a senior citizen, okay? This rifle has the distinction of uh, being chambered in a really cool cartridge, the 8mm Lebel, the 8x50 rimmed. The 8mm Lebel literally has the distinction of being the first smokeless cartridge ever. So this is literally the rifle that paved the way for everything that we have to show for smokeless powder development. I mean, the, the French literally designed smokeless powder. They invented smokeless powder. And they were the first people to experiment with this and to chase these wicked velocities and everything like that. And the eight, eight millimeter Lebel is literally the, like kind of the birth of that, right? The birthier of that. Uh-huh. Anyway, but uh, uh, enough dad jokes. But it's a really cool cartridge. 200 grain projectile, moving at a at a pretty sedate speed. I want to say it's about a 2300 feet per second, 2400 feet per second cartridge somewhere in that ballpark. Here's the bayonet for it. it uses a uh, cruciform spike bayonet. This is the frog, okay? And then this holds your clips of ammunition. I guess they are, they are called clips in this particular situation. Now, uh, the way this gun reloads and everything is really, really interesting, okay? Uh, you have a three and five round charger, okay? Uh, this particular one's a five rounder. Now we just fired five rounds out of the gun. The charger is still in the gun, okay? It stays in there as, as with many man liquor pattern uh, guns. Uh, when we insert the new uh, clip in there, there's a little chute out of the bottom that's gonna pop open. And if I do this right, it should jettison the old clip and then it should shut right back. Watch this. Now she's old guys, let's give her a break. It's supposed to pop open and jettison the clip and then shut right back. But that's kind of cool. You got a little, you know, gate that you can open up to drop the clips in and out. Now, if you loaded the charger into the rifle and you did not want to load or shoot the rifle, there's this little knob right here at the front of the trigger guard. Just push it and it will kind of relieve the tension like that. And you can remove the charger. Okay. Uh, they use three and five shot chargers. Um, a little odd and a little cumbersome, but definitely forward thinking, okay? The, the sights on this gun are pretty crude. Uh, it uses this really crude and wide uh, inverted U-notch and a really crude, odd front sight post. The sight radius is pretty consistent with what you would see out of most, uh, you know, rifles of the day. Um, the gun is very light and handy. It has a very light handling characteristic. It points really naturally, uses a straight bolt mechanism, okay? And you can see the cocking piece and the bolt mechanism. If you really just kind of think about it, what does this remind you a lot of? Kind of makes you think of the Mosin, right? Well, that's because, you know, the French really did have a lot to do with the early Mosin against. Like the early 1891, those original rifles were produced under French contract. So I would imagine that there were quite a few sort of design aspects that they took from that, right? 
So that's pretty neat. You know, it, it does have a very Mosin-like appearance, okay? But it is 8 millimeter bore, okay? 8 millimeter label still uses a 323 diameter projectile. And, uh, you know, it's a cool, quirky rimmed cartridge, two intergrain bullet. I mean, you could hear it's really driving that plate at 300 yards. Now, we'll um, make note here that the sight, the sight settings on this thing, it's super, super high even at 300 yards. So I, I don't know if someone's filed the front sight down or what, but the thing is just horrendously high. All right, so we'll put the charger back in there. All right, and that locks in place. And you're gonna see like condition wise on these things, they're kind of all over the place. Some of them are in really, really great condition. Some of them aren't. Um, one thing about French rifles as well that you'll notice is the really distinct trigger bow. I mean, it's just a flat trigger. Like it's really, really obscure, okay? Um, the cocking piece, like this sweep right here, literally comes directly from the M80 Gross rifle. Those are around in the uh, late 1800s. So they kept that type of cocking uh, piece shape, uh, which you see kind of get salvaged from the Gross, the M80 Gross rifle. All right, we're gonna shoot this thing a little bit more. Now I'm having to uh, <laughs> shoot like really low, a super extreme bullseye hold way under the plate. And I'm literally using the rear of the, the outside of the, of the sight notch here. So we'll see if I can hit a few things, but um, they're not bad rifles. They're elegant, they point naturally. Um, they're certainly comfortable to shoulder and shoot. You were spot on with the velocity is marked at 2,297 feet per second. Perfect. She's moving. Just high at one o'clock. Yeah, this second clip is working a lot better. That other one must not be to spec. Man, that 200 grain bullet just whacks that plate. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kind of wrapping them out. Uh, I'm not gonna shoot this gun a lot more. Uh, I will mention that the headspace on this gun is I mean, it's setting these primers back a bit, and we're getting a bit of bulging right here, so I, I would really hate to think that we've got any type of case head separation that's developing in this. We don't want to push the old girl too hard, uh, but we did want to make a video about this gun, just because it's a very unique rifle and, uh, and everything like that. All right, but I'll, I'll shoot one more clip. I mean, a couple of rounds ain't going to kill it, but uh, okay. So if you have an empty charger in there and you're not gonna push a loaded charger in on top of it to push it out, all you do is just open the chute and the old charger will just fall right out. No big deal. All right, so this charger appeared to uh, feed just fine. The rounds literally just load into the charger. There's no real rhyme or reason there, okay? Uh, there's a little knurled edge in there that the rims have to catch in to keep them from falling out, okay? So like that's not in all the way. There we go, now it is. Now you have to use the charger to feed, feed it ammunition, correct? You, you do have to use the charger to mm. feed the, the gun ammunition. Now you can single load it, Yeah. Uh, no problem. You don't have to have the charger to physically shoot the gun, but to feed it from the magazine, you must have the charger. That's correct. Neat. All right, so we'll push this thing home. All right, that locks in place. Okay, we should chamber the first round. Maybe, okay, it looks good. All right, we'll fire a couple more shots. Another distinct uh, characteristic is the very unique sling that's on this gun. Uh, usually a lot of the French rifles have a ring up here where the sling is attached, and that's very common. That ring you'll see uh, even in later French service rifles. They, they kind of kept that idea of using a ring to attach the, uh, the sling, and this is the original leather sling, original frog, scabbard, and bayonet. I don't think the bayonet's matching, but uh, I'll attach the bayonet here in a moment. Let's shoot a few more shots. I'm not going to shoot a lot more just because I don't want to put a lot of wear and tear on this old girl because the headspace a little bit off, but we'll shoot a few more rounds. I mean, the trigger's not bad. Um, it's a two-stage trigger. It's, it's got a good bit of creep and take up, but a pretty clean break. It's got a heavy trigger pull, which most French rifles tend to.
Oh, uh, you're high over the top again. Come on, girl. Good center mass. Well, the sights are dead on. They're just really low. <laughs> or high, I should say. That was the tiny popper. Weird. You were aiming for it, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, uh, we'll put the bayonet on the rifle here. All right, there's nothing retaining the bayonet in the scabbard, but to attach the bayonet, it's actually a really cool, cool man. All right, the gun, gun's clear. We're clear. The way it attaches is really neat. Uh, it's got a socket here on the bottom of the bayonet, and it just sets into this, uh, this socket that is... Uh, this recess that is made into the front barrel band, okay? And to attach the bayonet, we're simply gonna drop that on there just like that. I'll tell you what. All right, our bayonet's attached. You can see that's a cruciform spike bayonet. Now, what other thing do we notice about this bayonet design? Okay, there's a couple of connections here with this rifle. The straight bolt handle, the shape of the bolt, the linear axis of travel, the way the strip, even the way the receiver looks, the cruciform bayonet. What does that make us think of? The Mosin, right? The Russians were greatly influenced by this design and other French designs because, you know, the French were the first to design smokeless powder. Then why not design their rifle after the first, six, you know, one of the first successful smokeless powder rifles? Now, um, this is not, I don't believe this is the first rifle they fielded that, that used smokeless powder, but this is, this is a World War I era one. But this cartridge is the first smokeless cartridge. I'll have to look back on that a little bit. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire a couple of more shots, but this time I'm gonna leave the bayonet attached. And let's see if it brings that point of aim back where it's supposed to be. We've seen it with the Mosins before. We've seen it with the Mosins. So, let, all right, I've got five more rounds. Let's just try that. And that's just some PPU. They actually still load uh, eight by 50. And uh, I apologize, I'm not 100% on my facts, guys. We have uh, we have had a very rough couple of uh, months and we're just now getting back from all the trade shows and stuff. And uh, I haven't been shooting a lot of mill syrup, so I apologize if my facts are a little off. Uh, I'm trying my best here. It's a lot of information. I've, I've got a huge collection and we, uh, it's, it's hard to know everything all the time, but it's certainly a really cool rifle. All right, I'm gonna load the, load the mag. Oh, that loaded nicely. All right, let's see if having the bayonet attached brings the point of aim down. I'm gonna aim right at the plate and you let me know if I'm high. I will. We'll see if that bayonet really changes the uh, point of impact. I mean, I don't know if these were designed to be shot with the bayonet on or off, but I'm going to give it a try. All right, aiming right at it. All right, send it when you're ready. You're still high. How high? <laughs> uh, you were right there at the uh, bar, hanging the plate. So uh, if you're aiming dead center, you're probably two feet high. Uh, about six inches over the top. Now, is it shooting lower or higher than it was? It is shooting lower. Okay. still over the top. It did lower the impact, but not as much as you would think. Barely over the top of the plate. All right, last one's gonna be a clanger. <laughs> Here we go. Ding. All right, we're not gonna shoot the old girl anymore because I, <laughs> Quite frankly, I don't want to blow her to smithereens, okay? I'm, I don't doubt that the action's strong, but those, those primers are setting back and those cases are bulging, so we're probably gonna retire this old girl for the day, but we mainly wanted this to just be a cool video, kind of showing the gun in action, showing what it's all about. Um, I know a lot of folks play video games, obviously. 
really cool gun and uh, an awesome piece of history. I've never been like 100% up on my French rifles like I really should be. I do own about four or five French rifles uh, uh, from different eras and things like that. I've got an old balloon busting rifle from World War I. Uh, the M80 Grosse, they had a balloon busting round for it, an incendiary that they would actually shoot in the air to shoot down uh, Zeppelins. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't have any of those, but I do have one of those rifles. We will be doing a video on that one. And I have worked up a black powder load, and I have shot the M80 Gross, and it's actually a very accurate rifle, and it's great. Super smooth recoil, lots of power, so we will get on that in a future video. Um, there's some other really interesting French rifles that I'm hoping that we're going to do some videos on in a future date, so uh, just stay tuned for that. Uh, guys, I want to take a moment to thank all our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchase man cans, t-shirts, all the funds we earn off of those go right back to supporting the channel. So thank you for seeing value in what we do, and uh, we'll see you next time. Many more videos on the way. More mill syrups coming.